I'm going to take a few minutes and just uh, put Bernstein in context before we uh, before we dig into the music that is Candide. Um, Bernstein, this is his, his centenary, so there's a lot of uh, really interesting Bernstein events coming up. The LA Opera happens to be doing Candide right now, and there are still a few tickets available. So if at the end of the study this interests you, you can you can follow up with that. And I think the LA Phil is doing um, Mass, or just did it. Um, it's a centenary, so there's going to be a whole bunch of stuff. He, he was born 100 years ago this year. Um, and Leonard Bernstein, um, one of my personal favorites, uh, for sure, he he was kind of like the Quincy Jones of his era. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen the Quincy Jones interviews that are kind of making the rounds right now. They're they're pretty colorful, and they're hard they, to they're hard to forget once you've read one. Of them. Yeah, the, they'll um, yeah. Just read them. That's, that's all I have to say on that. But um, Bernstein was was a little bit like that in, in some ways, in, in that his musical life and his personal life crossed so many boundaries. And he really was our first major American conductor. And a major, you know, if if we, if we had a Mozart, I think most people might might point to him in that um, he he was a combined composer conductor, pianist, and a very capable teacher and lecturer. And he, he did these great young people's concerts and the unanswered question lectures at Harvard where he just talked about music philosophically. And, um, and he saw it from all sides as, as a conductor and as a pianist, someone who recreates the masterpieces of, of previous eras, and as a composer who is actively composing new and original works. And I think um, you know his life was very much split up between those fields. And I know one of the regrets at the end of his life was he wished he had spent more time composing because he wasn't as well known as a composer as he was for other stuff, even though he did have some some real um, real masterpieces. Uh, I forget where I was going with that. Uh, he well, his his breakthrough moment came um, 1943. He was the assistant conductor of the New York Philharmonic, and Bruno Walter got sick, and Bernstein conducted a televised performance with no rehearsal. And the next page, the next day, he was on the front page of the New York Times, and that's where like people he started to get a lot of attention, um, and that kind of stuff. So we we mostly know him. The, the, his most lasting works would be West Side Story, of course, and the Symphonic Dances, which we actually studied here uh, a couple of years ago. We did a long form study on the on West Side Story. Um, this Candide overture, which I'm going to talk about Candide in a second. Candide is a, a pretty complex and unique work. He did write three symphonies. He wrote um, one or two movies, I can't, I can't remember, but he was not really, uh, that, that's not a genre that he really focused a lot of time in. Um, a good number of musicals slash operettas, of which Candide is one. Um, yeah, so that is, that's Bernstein in the context of history. And, and now we look back on him I mean, and his, his friendships and his, his legacy because he, um, he was a Harvard grad. He went to Curtis. Um, and, I mean, much like the Quincy reference I made earlier, his roommates were Adolph Green and like people who just ended up going in and out of his life in, in very major ways. Um, he, was, he was very well connected uh, by virtue of being so incredibly talented um, and prolific, too. So, Candide. Oh yeah. Oh, Chichester Psalms. I forgot that one. A, a very major choral work that that um, that endures today. It's a beautiful work, which I, at some point I would love to study that one here. 